I hope you guys are doing well. So before we get started with this video, uh, I have our Instagram account and also Twitter. Now, so if you want any updates, etc., you just follow me there and also turn on notifications for the YouTube channel. As you can see, we have a Facebook page as well. So I have a link to all of those in the description below. So this one is going to be a little bit different from my usual subscribers, but maybe something good for new ones uh, because I'm starting up completely a uh, free beginner series on Blender. So currently this is the version 2.83, but uh, obviously it will be applicable for future versions as well. So uh, this is the beginner course, and uh, the part one uh, is just going to be a basic overview. So those who have actually touched Blender a little bit before, feel free to start part two. Part two has been already uploaded with part one as well. So the software is completely free for those of you who don't know, and that link is all downloading in the description below. It's really simple to install. So um, let's get started. This is just going to be a basic overview. And uh, you need to know that I will be going to be uh, we're going to be going to a little bit more in depth later on. So these are my shortcut keys, so you can see uh, what keys I'm using over here. This will be useful for you. And second thing you need to do is going to edit preferences, going to key map, and select the mouse button to left. By default, I don't know if they change it or not. I don't remember exactly. But when you select something, you will be using the left mouse button, space to search, and uh, select all toggle. By this, uh, by uh, by clicking on these settings, now let's get started. So uh, by selecting all, you can click on A to select everything and A to deselect everything. You see. So now um, let's start. This is our basic scene. Okay, we have our light over here. This is just to light our scene, light up our scenes, and the camera and whatever you're going to render, like the image final product you're going to show the people, it is going to be visible from over here. So what we're going to be actually making is this scene over here. It will be a little bit animated as well. Okay. So yeah, it's uh, supposed to teach you almost every aspect, like here yeah, these things exist in Blender or not. Okay. So yeah. So you can click on all to see what the canvas is. This thing is going to be rendered. Not everything around over here, but whatever you're seeing from the camera, you can click on the zero button to. Uh, see from the camera view okay and this, these are our side menus so if you notice when I have this camera selected the options are different when I have the light stack the options are again different and when I select the cube the options are again different so these settings will change okay so for now um, let me just uh, give you a little bit of overview on the side menus so this is our uh, basic uh, render engine okay EV and cycles. EV is used mostly for when you want things to be non realistic, like cartoon stuff, and cycles is used for you know, to, and when you want something to be realistic, like your world. Like. But that doesn't mean that cycles can't make cartoons and EV can't make realistic renders. It all depends upon you and your work skills. The work point is, well, sort of different. I don't touch it very well, so I don't feel like I should speak on it. The same thing is how much quality do you want your image to be, like how good you want it to be. The viewport quality is when, for example, when I click Z. And then go on to render view. And this is for uh, this viewport setting is for this uh, the, how we see things from over here. Uh, but since this is a simple cube, it doesn't look that much different from the actual rendered one to that much different at all. So let's go back to the right one. Uh, and EV is sort of different, like cycles, for example, like if you want to turn on lights or have uh, like fog, etc. Or uh, like reflection, light bouncing, etc. Then you need to turn on these settings. Uh, we'll turn on the settings to see uh, when we actually are starting making this scene. So uh, I'll just leave it these two for the later. Later on, you can also the resolution or change the resolution from over here. Like if I want it to be SD, then these are settings will remain the same. You can also change the output quality if you want it to be an image or a video or something like that. Again, we're going to be looking at these in depth later on. Um, this is something advanced, and I can don't recommend right now touching it for now. Same over here, but uh, I'll just I'll give you a little bit of overview. Uh, the gravity then you can also simulate physics, like how in real world objects fall down. So if you have uh, physics turned on, then the gravity will be effective, and then you know you can also change gravity as you can see over here, and it has gravity from different parts as well. So you know it's actually going upon you right now. For this tutorial, we won't be needing it, so it's more like so. This is the world setting. Now, when we go back into render view, you, you can see the world is sort of red. You can change the world color as well. Okay, and also you can also use HDRI images to light up your scene as well. But that's something for later. 
and this is now uh, the transform menu. The transform menu is basically you can change the location on the x axis. By the way, before I forget, you can use Ctrl Z to change things back to normal. This x is the x axis, okay, like on the other way, moving my, my, my mouse. And the green light, green line, this is the y axis. You can actually change the view uh, the way I'm rotating the middle mouse button and rotating it around. And the z axis is from top to bottom, like this over here. Okay, and you can use this, uh, you can use um, different settings to rotate scale or change the location. Okay, you can use, you can use the shortcut EG to move, grab and move it around. As you can see, these values also change when I grab it. And you can also change it manually if you want to be a little bit more specific on the X, on the Y, or on the Z. Okay, G was one option, and you can also rotate it from over here, obviously, or you can use the R key to rotate it like this around. And you can also restrict it, like if I click on R and X, it will only rotate on the X axis. You can also scale it, scaling means changing its size, okay. So this is how you can scale it, or you can scale it on the specific axis, or you can scale it uh, like S, Shift, Z, now when I did S, Shift, oh, S, Shift, Z, so now it's scaling it on all of the axis except for that axis. Or it could be S, Z, so it's now scaling only on the Z axis. Okay, so yeah, there are also different modes. Object mode, this is our current mode. And now you can also go to edit mode. The edit mode has these uh, where it says edges and faces. You can also edit the object over here. This is where all the magic happens. Um, obviously, you can add more um, loops to this. Like if I wanted something in the center, I can do control R. And you know, add a loop cut over here. You can also move the loop cut if you want, but I don't. And you can also go into Z, wireframe, deselect everything, B to box select, and X to delete the faces. Oh. X to delete the vertices. Now it's just a half clear, you know, and the size is open. You have to come out of edit mode. And there are also other modes like sculpting mode. This is again something different that I don't usually do, so I'm just leaving that vertex paint mode and weight painting mode. Weight painting mode is usually used to assign it like a value or something. Uh, the value can be range from 1 to, as you can see over here, to 0. So basically, when you weight paint an object, you can do some effects that are only specific and that will, if you want, to only affect a specific areas. You also need a lot of geometry for this. For example, right now, if I'm trying to weight paint it, it's just looking really weird. So it's because uh, of this. Uh, right now it's not showing properly. I think it's because 2.3 has a little bit of bugs, but uh, you know it will still work. And now we're going to go into modifiers. Modifiers are basically uh, pre-built functions that you can use to uh, create a lot of different stops. There are a lot of them. Again, going uh, through each and every one of them won't be possible, but I will show you two of them, which are the most commonly used modifiers. So. The first one we're going to be using the mirror modifier. It will be used uh, while modeling a character or a lot of other things. We will be also using it. So you can also turn on bisect, but right now because I already deleted these other half, right now it's turned on because of the mirror modifier. But if I hadn't deleted the other half, then I could have used bisect to delete, automatically delete the other half on the x-axis. Okay. So you can also do a lot of other things. You can use some other object to mirror it. But right now when I go back to edit mode, A to select all. And G, X to V, we're yet right, now these two are splitting up. We don't want them to split up. What if we don't want them to split up? So we're going to turn on flipping. Then G, X again, and now look, their bots, uh, it's making sure that their bots still attached. The second modifier that you'll be using almost all of the time, maybe not for low quality stuff, but, you know, for sub prevention of that modifier. So the, in the viewport, the value set to 1. But when I will render it, it won't look like this. It will look like uh, this because the value for render was set to 2. So make sure that uh, you actually uh, check it out at least a little bit. Now, there's another thing that you want, uh, might be wondering why are these, uh, you know, blocky things being shown. If you don't want that, then right click, click on shades one. So now it's sort of more smooth, smooth it out. See? You can also turn back by shading flat, but shades won't work so now I guess. It depends on you. Oh, the starting point is a lot more like uh, experimenting. So that's that. Um, I'm just going to remove the subdivision setup modifier for now. Now the particle system are something that we're going to be discussing, but basically if you want something uh, to exist a number of times, 
and if you, uh, you don't want them to manually you know like except for example you want more, more chips so i can duplicate this scale this and then shift it move it over here and then scale scale it down this is a lot of work okay but if i want a specific object to be multiplied we can use particles for that but uh, i'll discuss it later on when we are making the scene over here so it's better to just leave it at uh, the force field and the constraint tab are sort of advanced for now so i suggest you don't test them for now like after a month of learning if you have touched up everything else then sure you can also change the uh, color of your materials right now i'm going to go into material view the default color is right now white like this so if i want to change the color i can also change the color like so and this isn't just basic colors you can do a lot more better than this you have used, you have seen this there are a lot of other colors involved in it so yeah there are also different views okay when i click on um, for example if i want to change the uh, material a lot let it work more drastically so i'll click on shading tab and it automatically opens this view with an upgrade as you arrive which actually shows me how it will work uh, around around the real world so when i click on over here shift a mix figure and shift a glossy now the glossy shader already exists for example if i turn this into metallic it will automatically go basically principle bscf has so many materials inside of it but for just demonstration purposes i'm showing you this uh, i want its gloss to be like red and you know like this i don't want it to be rough so you can see it shining around a little bit red and if I turn on roughness up, then it fades away. Okay, so there are different views for basically different purposes. If you click on modeling, you automatically go into edit mode. Sculpting view, view editing, etc. There are so many different views. Again, we'll be discussing almost, uh, I will try my best to include almost every aspect, but there won't be a, a uh, not every aspect will be discussed obviously but you know you should be able to start off with blender pretty well so uh, please leave a like and start part 2 of this where we actually start making this scene over here in blender and please subscribe to our channel i will be uploading uh, parts uh, maybe day by day maybe uh, a gap of one day or maybe a gap of two days but they will, it will be a series so i will try my best to upload them as soon as possible please leave a like comment subscribe to our channel see you next time the next part and the next part is already uploaded goodbye